Hello and welcome, Kendra Morgan here from Cards by Kendra, and today I'm on the TLC Designs YouTube channel to share an interactive card making tutorial using the Dragon Baby Greetings digital stamp set. I'm also using two different die sets and the Perfectly Precious pattern paper from TLC Designs. Now this is the See You in the Center die set that comes with the interactive pieces here in the middle, which is what I'll be using for this card. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pieces that I need. Now there are two long skinny pieces. One is slightly longer than the other, and you'll only need one of these, so pick whichever one works best for your project. I'm going to use the shorter one because I'm going to fit the interactive part inside of the circle from the other die set. I won't be using the frames that come with this die set, just the mechanical pieces. But what's so great about these interactive dies is that the back side of the packaging gives step-by-step -step instructions on how many pieces you'll need to die cut and also how to put each of the pieces together. Now I'm also incorporating the largest circle die from the Aztec Sunshine die set. This is a fun die set that also has a smaller stitch circle, a sun that you can layer, and some clouds and birds. So I'm really excited about using this die set for future cards. Now I have some teal heavyweight cardstock by Recollections. It's 110 pounds, so it's very sturdy. And I'll also... Um, be incorporating the pattern paper later but the first time i made this card i glued two pieces of this heavyweight cardstock together and then i die cut it so i wouldn't have to cut out so many pieces but because it was so thick my dies didn't cut all the way through so this time i decided to just die cut the individual pieces out and then glue them together it really just depends on how heavyweight your cardstock is. Gluing them together first will definitely save you some time if your cardstock is not too thick. The Perfectly Precious Designer Paper Pack is available to purchase, and the dimensions are 5.5 by 8.5 inches, so you can use it for slimline cards. I have just a few sample sheets here, but it's also available digitally, so you can download it and print it yourself. This is the action stamp set that has different action words and arrows that are perfect to use with interactive cards. On the instructions, step one tells you to cut two frames and place one of the slot dies where you desire, which is the long skinny piece that I mentioned earlier. But because I'm not using the frames, I'm going to cut two of the Aztec circle dies. Step two says to cut out the pieces for the mechanism, and I fit as many of the dies that I could here on my teal piece of cardstock. These are the arms, and it says to cut four of them and then here two together so that you will have a total of two arms. And then you'll need to cut a total of eight washers so that you can have four in the end. Now my Big Shot plates are a little bit warped, so when I've cut out this first Aztec circle, it didn't cut all of the little tiny details along the edges all the way through, which is fine if you like having an embossed look or if that's what you're going for. But because I wanted to pull in some of the other colors from that pattern paper, I decided to just cut another teal piece out, and then I also cut another circle out of some hot pink heavyweight cardstock for the second layer. I, this time I moved my dies closer to the center of my magnetic platform and then I flipped over both of my cutting plates and it definitely worked much better the second time through. Now you see that little tool piece here? I already cut this out earlier three times and I glued all three of the pieces together, but because my cardstock is so thick, I really only needed two layers. So just keep that in mind. But this tool is used to allow space when opening the brads so that the pieces will move freely when you put the mechanism together, which we'll do here in just a moment. Now I wanted that pink to show through the holes on the teal piece. So I'm gluing these two layers together using some Gina K Connect liquid glue. This is a really strong liquid glue and I thought it would be best to use it to adhere all of the mechanical pieces together. And I'm going to offset the pink piece so that the stitched lines will show through the holes of this teal piece. And then I'm gonna be gluing all of the other pieces together for the mechanism. And in the end, you should have a total of two arms, four washers, and one dial, each of them being two layers thick. For the slot die, I wanted to make sure I placed it directly in the middle of my circle. So I used my T ruler to measure the diameter, which is three and seven eighths of an inch. 
If you divide that in half to find the radius, it's not exactly easy to find on your ruler. It's actually 1.938, but it really doesn't have to be exact. Just know that it's a little less than two inches. Now, I used to be a seventh grade math teacher before I became a technology teacher, and this would have been a really good visual example to show my students so that they could practice dividing fractions to find the radius of a circle. Anyway, I tried to line up the whole of the slot die over my pencil mark as best as I could, and I used some washi tape to hold it down. Now, I did flip this die over before running it through my big shot in case you happened to catch that I taped it upside down. But when I went to remove my washi tape, it tore my cardstock a little bit. But that's okay because it'll be covered up by the cute little baby dragon piece here shortly. I would recommend using a low tack tape instead. I guess that my washi tape, it was just a little bit too sticky. And then next I used the little tiny hole die to cut out a hole between the two slots after accidentally flinging it across the room and spending 10 minutes trying to find it. You could use a paper piercer here, which would probably be easier, but it doesn't matter as long as you have a hole between those two slots. And because my cardstock is so thick, I ended up having to use my paper piercer anyway just to get the little cardstock pieces out of there. Now we are on step three of the instructions, but since we're not using the frame, this will be a little bit different for this card. If you use the diagram on the instructions and place the third hole of the dial at the center hole of the circle frame, you'll see that the dial doesn't stick out far enough from the edge of the circle for the dial mechanism to work. The die set comes with a die so you can cut out space for your dial to swing freely, this little piece here, but I just decided not to use it. I didn't want to cut out any part of my circle, so I wanted to just make the dial stick out further so that it would work. So you'll want to make sure that you put the dial with the second hole from the top to line up with the center hole of the circle frame. The dial gets assembled beneath the frame, so that's why you see the pink side of my circle, the back side. You will need seven brads for assembly, and it's best to use small brads with flat heads. Now, the first time I made this card, I used these brads here that I bought from AC Moore back before they closed down, but they're 5.7 millimeter. There's two different sizes here. I used the small ones, of course. But they do have a flat head, but I thought they were just a little too big, so I'm going to try these other brads that I have. They're a little bit smaller, um, but these other brads have a rhinestone gem in the center, which is going to get covered up, which is kind of sad, but these are the only brads that I had on hand at the time that I made this card. So I'm just pouring them here into my handy little skull cup that I usually use for making shaker cards. But if you compare the two, you'll see that the head is just a little bit flatter on the one with the rhinestone and the wings are a little bit skinnier. So I'm gonna give these other ones a try and see if that works better. Now we're on step four. You'll take the dial piece and one of the arm pieces and line up the hole on the arm on the back side of the dial. And then you're gonna run the brad through both holes. Um, now the wings of even my smaller brads were still just a little bit too wide. So I had to widen the holes a little bit by turning my brad so that it would move freely. And I made sure that my dial looked just like the picture that was shown on step four before moving forward. So what this should look like, the head of the brad should be facing down and the wings of the brad should be facing up with the arm underneath the dial. So now we're going to adjust the wings. I placed the tool on the wings of the brad to give space between the dial, and then I opened up the wings and then flattened them against the tool before sliding the tool out. And like I said before, I used three layers of cardstock to make my tools, so I don't think you need that many, um, but you just wanna make sure that your arm can move freely. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other arm, just on the other side. You'll want to make sure that you skip the second hole on the dial and use the third hole. The hole between the two is how you're going to connect the dial to the circle frame. So I'm again lining up the hole, pushing the brad through, and then I'll be using the tool 
to give it a little bit of space and then spreading out the wings. Now we're on step five of the instructions where we're going to use brads number three, four, and five with the washer pieces. For brad number three, I'm pushing it through one of the washer holes, then putting it through one of the slots, and then adding another washer on the back side. And then I'm gonna use the tool to open up the wings. Then you'll do the same thing for the other two washers with brad number four. The last part of step five on the instructions says to put brad number five through the frame in the little hole right in the center, and then you're gonna turn the frame over. Now, because the frame is a circle and I had only made this card once before, I was having a little trouble remembering how I attached the dial to the center brad. You can't really go by the instructions on the back because it's a different frame. But anyway, I didn't have my washers in the right spot, so I decided that I would just pull out my prototype to use as a guide. That way you can see how it's all supposed to attach for the mechanism to work. So what you want to do is make sure that your empty holes on each of the washers are on the outside closest to the edge of the circle. And then your die or your dial, I'm sorry, is going to be perpendicular to the slot lines once you have everything attached. So the dial will kind of make like a little L shape when it's in the center. So before you attach your dial to the frame, you wanna make sure that you've lined up the empty holes of both arms with the empty holes of the washers through the slot on both ends and have those ready to go. Now that everything is in the right spot, I'm gonna attach the dial to the frame and I've poked that brad through that second hole there and I'm using the tool to separate the wings and this is what's basically attaching the dial to the circle frame. And so that tool is allowing the pieces to move freely and I've got my washers somewhat <laughs> where they need to be so that we can now um, finish this up. From the front of the frame, you put brad six head first through the washer, and then you put it, sorry, it's off camera here. Then you put it through the slot of the frame, and then through the other washer on the other side, and also the hole of the lower arm. Then you just do the same thing to the other side. So you wanna make sure that you line up all of the holes so it's gonna go through all four of those pieces. So you'll just, from the front, put the brad through, make sure it goes through all four of those pieces and use your tool and separate the wings. Now that the interactive mechanism is working and put together, let's move on to the baby dragon. This is a digital stamp from the Dragon Baby Greetings digital stamp set that I've printed onto Nina Solar Y 80 pound cardstock. The size is 2.903 by 1.817, and I'm using Copic markers to color him with. I'm starting with cool gray number one, or C1, and I'm just going along the outside egg edges of the eggshell and along the crack lines. I wanted to keep the egg white to match the background of the pattern paper that I plan to use. So the cool gray color just gives it a little bit of shadow along the edges. 
Then next I used C0, which was is almost white, and I just added that on the inside of the C1 lines. And so now I'm using YG01 as my lightest shade of green and I'm coloring his entire face first. And then I'm adding YG03 along the edges for the shadow. And of course I have sped up this video. Um, I wish I could color this fast, but I am adding that same YG03 along the bridge of his nose and along the brow line. And I just blended it toward the top of the dragon's head. For the dragon's horn, I'm using YR23 and YR21. And I wanted to pull in a little bit of purple since it's a complementary color to teal. And so I used BV13 for the spots on the egg. Now, even though I think he looks super cute just like this, I decided to add some dragon scales. And I chose to use some colored pencils. I used a reddish brown color called Red Umber to draw the tiny circles on the darker shades of green. And then I used a color called Orange Crush to draw the little circles on the lighter shades of green. Now, the Orange Crush color really looks more like a mustard yellow color to me, or kind of like a mustardy brownish yellow. But I didn't want it to be too um, noticeable on those lighter parts where you know, it's like his cheeks and his eyelids. And then I just ran the Copic marker YG01 over it again, just to kind of tone it down a little bit. I used my Tim Holtz mini snips to fussy cut him out. And then I ran a black Copic marker along the edges since he'll be popped up on top of my card. I also printed out the flower that I resized to 1.275 inches by 1.422 inches. And I also made the bow a little bit bigger and I resized that to 0 0.35 by 0 0.773. I colored the flower using RV25 and RV23. And then I used YR21 for the center. I decided to make the leaves a teal green color to match the pattern paper. So I used BG34 and BG13. And then for the bow, I used BV17 and BV13. And then I fussy cut those out off camera as well. Now for the dial piece, I stamped the arrows from the action stamp set directly onto the dial piece that was sticking out using some memento black ink and an acrylic block. I'm cutting my pattern paper down to three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I used a die that I had in my stash and I cut out this fancy little scallop frame to go around that and I've placed it on a hot pink, that same hot pink heavyweight cardstock that I used for the backside of my interactive part. And um, this is a top folding card and I've glued all of this down. And so now it's time to attach the interactive piece. We'll be using some foam tape to do this and because the dial on the mechanism needs to be able to move freely you want to make sure you don't put any foam pieces in the way of the moving parts i'm using some foam rectangles that i bought from the dollar tree they work really great and they're affordable and i'm placing them around the edges just making sure that they won't be in the way of the dial I needed to add another little piece there to the right and the full rectangle wouldn't fit so I cut that one in half and then I attached another piece to the left but I wanted to zoom in just so you could see that there's a gap between the foam and the mechanism and so it needs to be a little bit thicker so that the mechanism can work. So I decided to double layer each of the foam pieces and I apologize for my hair being in the way. It looks a little crazy, but I, I had it in a bun on top of my head and I wanted to make sure that these lined up exactly. I didn't want to attach the interactive piece to the card base just yet because I wanted to attach the dragon first. So now I'm just cutting the head from the eggshell to make the baby dragon image be in two parts in order for the interactive part to work. And again, I colored the edges with a black marker again. 
And so the baby's head needs to be able to move out from behind the eggshell. So that means it needs to be on the lowest level. And so here you see me applying some smaller foam squares to the tops of the brads. For this first washer piece, I used four squares, one on top of each of the brads, and then I layered up two squares in between the brads so that they were level. And before I attach the head, I wanna make sure that I put the shell on the bottom part of the mechanism first so that when I attach the head, it won't move too far away from the jagged edges of the top of the shell piece. So since they need to slide together, I'm having to add an extra layer of foam on the bottom piece so that there's space for the head to move and kind of hide behind the shell. On the bottom washer, I initially used seven foam squares but I end up removing one of the squares that was layered up on the top washer so that the head could slide a little bit further down into the shell. You'll see me remove it here in just a moment, but along the bottom edges of the eggshell, I'm adding three foam squares layered up on each side and I'm attaching it directly to the back of the eggshell, but I'm not removing the sticky part of the foam square on the one that's on top. And this is mainly just to provide stability because you want the mechanism to be able to move. And make sure that the dial is all the way open before attaching the baby dragon's head to the foam squares. You don't wanna stick it down and then the head be too far away from the eggshell. Don't worry about the foam square on top because we're just gonna cover that up here with the bow. Now that I have everything working the way I want it to, I'm going to attach my interactive piece to my card base by removing the adhesive backing on these foam rectangle pieces. And at first I thought I wanted to have this over on the right and, and then I just decided to put it in the center. It just looked better. And so I'm carefully trying to just line this up, make sure it's in the middle and that it's straight and then applying some pressure to the foam pieces so that it will stay. And isn't it so cute? But I do need to finish off the card. So I'm taking the sentiment that says you bring me joy and I'm just kind of cutting around it. And you'll see me kind of playing around with the placement here a little bit. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the sentiment. It didn't really fit every way that I tried. And so I just decided to cut apart the letters and then put them kind of one on top of the other on the right hand side. I initially started out on the left hand side, but then I remembered I needed to put the flower on there. And so to balance it out, I moved the sentiment to the right and then I attached the flower on the left hand side. One thing I realized that I didn't do was provide stability on the back of the baby dragon's head like I did the bottom shell. And so I'm just double layering up some foam squares and I'm leaving the adhesive backing on one of them, the one that's gonna be sliding against the circle frame. And so I just stuck it on the back of the baby dragon's head on both sides. To finish off my card, I added a little bit of ice glaze stickles to the center of the flower to give it some sparkle. And here is the finished card. I think it turned out so cute. It's just too adorable. <laughs> Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you click like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time here on the TLC Designs YouTube channel. Have a great day.